welcome to the HCS Orlando Major. It is day three, and folks, you know what that means. It's Championship Sunday. Bound with the flank, picks up one, picks up two. Nice double kill. Gets the soccer rifle looking for the drill. This weekend, we watched the best teams in the world come out here to Orlando to battle out on this stage to become the best, to be Halo champions. And now we only got two remaining. You guys ready to get this grand final started? Coming out to the stage first, they have been to every single grand finals. Two-time champions, make some noise for Cloud9. We got Stellar, Penguin, Eco, and Bound. Looking to do it again, it's Cloud9. All right, all right, all right. Cloud9 ready to go, but we got to bring out their opponent, the finalist. Coming from the winner's side of the bracket, looking to get their first chip this season. Let your voices be heard. Here comes Optic Gaming. Make some noise. Trippy, formal, lucid, APG. I give to you. The stage is set, and it's time to crown a champion. Let's toss it to our casters. On set, Rob, take it away. It's Sunday night here in Orlando, and you know what that means, people. It's time for a grand final, Andy, and what a grand final we have in store for us. On one side of the stage, we have the Green Wall. We have Optic Gaming. What a story it's been for them so far this year, but the question for me, as it has been for many, can they write the final chapter and finally close that book with the championship? That's right, their whole season has led up to this point. We've been asking, can they get a LAN championship? Can Trippy and Lucid secure their first LAN wins? And how fitting, they're gonna have to take down Cloud9, a team that has never placed outside the top two on LAN in Halo Infinite. Yeah, Cloud9, what a run they have been on today as well. Like we've seen, taking down the likes of Sentinels, taking down the likes of FaZe in the previous round, and now they get the opportunity to maybe slay Optic Gaming as well. They have been the guardians of the LAN Championships in the Halo Championship Series so far this year. Never have they placed outside of the top two in the live event environment. And how about the way they do it? As we saw this event leading up, it's really similar to Raleigh, right? You got some green wall chants going on here, and they're creating a physical green wall in front of the stage. <laughs> but Cloud9, they love to be those silent assassins quietly making their way through the bracket. They don't care if there's a bunch of screaming Oscar fans here in the front row. They'll make their way through the bracket. They will take down teams one by one. And Optic Gaming, I mean, like we've said, all the questions coming into this event is can you just finally get over the line. Everyone's kind of had the thought in the back of their mind. It's not if, it's more when they will win that LAN championship. Well, everything seems to be lining up for them now. They're in the grand final, but not only that, they're in it from the winner's side of the bracket as well. Right, the first time we've seen that on LAN, the winner's bracket advantage for Optic Gaming. They're always coming in through the loser's bracket and having to win two back-to-back -back series if they get to the grand finals. However, now with that winner's bracket finals advantage, maybe 
just maybe this is their chance to secure their first LAN win this season. And Orlando's loud, right, at the, at the moment. This crowd is loud. It is pretty one-sided, though. I will say, a lot of Optic fans out there. There's some C9 faithful within that crowd as well. And like you said, I think C9 almost kind of enjoy that environment, right? Always kind of understated, quietly going about their business. And you saw the reaction of Penguin when he came out. It was a couple of boosts in the crowd for C9 from the Optic fans. He was lapping it up. It was almost like that was fuel to the fire. Yeah, he's not too worried about their Penguin on your screen as you heard, highest KD on the team right now, and an incredible performance all season long as he's burst his way onto the C9 roster. Early on, you also talk about another player that's bound. Not only is this his LAN debut with C9, but it is now also officially his Grand Finals LAN debut as well. Yeah, very, very true. And we can take that story even further, right? Because whatever happens in this Grand Final, there will be a first ever event victory for one of the players that's on the stage. If it's C9, who take home that win. Like you mentioned, grand final debut for Bound in the, in the LAN environment. It will be his first ever event win as well. On the other side, we know all about it. Trippy and Lucid in search of that elusive first chip. What's incredible is how just how winning this team has been all year long online. They've secured plenty of online wins, but you know to Lucid and Trippy, it's gonna mean something different to secure this LAN win. And of course, let's not forget, whoever wins this series will be the favorite for the Halo World Championship in just three weeks. Three weeks time, like you say, the Halo World Championship Finals are going to be here before we even realize it. But it's enough talk about the Halo World Championships because we've got a LAN Championship to decide. Orlando, you're sounding pretty loud right now. Let's talk about our first game time though. It's looking like Aquarius CTF is where we're going to be starting, Andy. That's right, Aquarius CTF. What a game type to start between these two teams. We talk about an off-the-rip game type. It's Aquarius CTF. Guns are going to be blazing immediately right off of the opening start. And one thing that I love about this game type being first up in this series, if you say, what's one of C9's best game types? If you say, what's one of Optic's best game types? Aquarius Flag's probably going to be in the conversation for both of them. Yeah. They are both so strong. When it comes to this flag-based game type, it's almost as if we're going to see two of the best just butting heads to that mid -bound. Honestly, it's a great game to start with. It reminds me of a midship CTF, a heretic CTF, a countdown CTF. You're going to spawn, and your gun is going to be firing immediately. And it's honestly a great way to start our grand finals here at ATS Orlando. So final adjustments for the players, the hand warmers. Getting those fingers nice and warm, ready to go, making sure that when it comes down to those clutch 1v1 fights, that BR is not missing your opponent. It's time for the final to get going here in Orlando. Make some noise for Cloud9 versus Optic Gaming. Let's take a look at the stats so far of Lucid and Penguin. Look at these numbers here for Penguin. 22.3 kills per game for Penguin with a great KD as well. The man is ready to play. What a weekend it's been for Penguin. What a weekend it's been for Penguin, and what a game time this is for him as well. We've looked at the statistics across the year for Penguin. Objectively, he is the man who is running that flag home for Cloud9. Well, I have everybody, Orlando. It's time for us to crown the champion. C9, let's start off by watching some Penguin. What a story for both these teams so far this weekend. Optic for the first time coming in through the winner's bracket. Cloud9 ready to upset that Cinderella story yet again. Well, early on hit, a little bit of a gunfight going down on the bonfire, but it seems like Optic have got the better at this start. Cloud9 lost a few players in the early scuffle, which means that APG, who has had a permanent smile on his face, not only because of results, but also because of the backing of the crowd, is now going to be moving in this place with that camo in his hands too. It's a nice drop side one as well. APG gets it past the halfway mark. Right away, one dead for each side. They're for each side, but these kills vital, and they go in the favor of Cloud9. So tripping our last player alive for Optic. This will be a dead flag. Optic can go lose map control as well. So C9 now making that push through the closet. Early indication that from Optic though, right? They are here to be the aggressors. They want to force the action. They want to get the flag pulled. But it's back-to-back -back advantages here for Cloud9. You are going to see these games just being decided by tiny, yes. small moments, where it's a 1v1 fight, whether it's a back oh. smack, or whether it's lucid busting Optic out of their base and pushing them forward with a triple kill. Wow, just nades into the connector from Lucid, gets the call out, just cleans up the kills. That'll be four dead with three players responding right now. Trippy and APG pick up a couple as well. The first time we're going to see Optic 
Inside of that base with an element of control as well. Lucy picks up the kill. That's three dead for Cloud9. Penguins last alive here. And that Dynamo nade is going to be frying those two players off respawn. Tick, tick, tick goes the Dynamo. The flag runs a little late though. It's just a second late. Lucid will continue. Two dead here. Optic cannot get that flag moving the way they would have wanted to. And a couple of clutch kills and clutch grenades coming in from Cloud9. Somehow off of that respawn means they can refight for this flag. However, the defensive work not done yet. You can see respawns are coming in for Optic. So Eco's got a huge amount of work to do and he does it superbly well. They pick an extra second there to run that flag. It cost them in the end. You saw Camo was up top middle with three dead for Cloud9. That will be a formal grab for Optic Gaming. Hey, formal trying to be sneaky, trying to be as silent as possible, moving through the back of this base. That's a kind of a grenade which might actually kind of hinder him momentarily, but instead he's going to take this 1v1 with Bound. Bound being a nuisance, there's the help coming in. Bound still being a nuisance, finally going to be get taken down. The help is arriving now for Formal as he picks up one. That's a killing spree for him, but he's last player alive here, but still going to try and force this flag. Stella being such a nuisance on the bomb fire. Oh my gosh, I'm leaving the Formal there to almost get the flag run going. He will get taken down. But here, with about three minutes to play into the game, let's get into a listen-in with Optic Gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red is already in the fridge. Up card, 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 up we still have control though. Who's I'll go for it. I'll go you. Seller, seller. back into the game from that Astro. Listen, it. It's Optic who take the lead. The first flag in our grand final goes to the green wall. Really starting to pop off as well. They've had a man advantage several times back to back to back and it pays off with a flag cap. One player that you and I have been talking about as Lucid deals the damage into the back of the base. That's formal. He's been on fire this weekend, but I think there's even more room for him to pop off. He's 11 and 4. He's 11 and 4, and all of Cloud9 are currently in the black screen. They are all dead. They're all coming off respawn. And with Lucy with camouflage south, top pink, and the flag moving, it was 1 0 just a few seconds ago, but a few steps away. It's going to be 2. They double their lead here on Team Gaming. And Formal, the man you were talking about, puts the objective home. Picks up another one comfortably and brings that flag in. We'll avoid these grenades as well. And it looks like it's a different Optic Gaming here coming from the winner's bracket in the grand finals they are here to play and looking better than ever scary thing here for cloud nine is whenever you're watching a pov whoever it is at the moment it always seems to be in the cloud nine half of the map on aquarius they're struggling to get out of their base they're being pinned in by the pressure and the angles that have been taken by optic gaming but now they've got at least a little bit of map presence you can see the lucid is just making sure he's putting up the defensive perimeter talked about Luce's interview after the most recent tournament, what they needed to work on. It was these little moments, these little adjustments. And so far this weekend, it has paid off and indicated that each of the situations they've worked on is dialed in and they are ready to play. Still leading by two flags here. Six minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock. 20 seconds till that next camouflage is coming up as well. That's why he's seen the Leafs to go top middle, but not overextend too much. His job is just to try and lock down this position, lay down a little bit of cover fire as Cloud9 are finally inside of the Optic Gaming base. Stella's gonna try and want this one through the wow. closet. It gets just about there, but look at the damage that's been oh, done by Lucid. He gets a killing spree, and through all of that, takes one to the grave. Look at that play as one of the last two players alive. Are you kidding me? You do all that damage to a player bottom middle, you stop the flag run, and then you finish the kill as well, and you keep going! Look at Lucid right now! Lucid's doing everything on the map. He's shooting everyone. They get a flag return as well. And 
and he gets the camo. We say perfect Halo sometimes. The last 30 seconds from Lucid been pretty much that. There is no player that has made sequences like that more and more often than Lucid. That was once again a clinic in how to run the map, especially from a man disadvantage. <laughs> Cloud9 at the moment are getting outslayed pretty heavily. You're looking across the stats from Optic and every single member at the moment is in the positive ratio. And you're looking at APG, huge amount of assists. And you look at the assists in general from Optic Gaming, everybody is shooting for each other at the moment. And how about Trippy? Does this man want an event winner? What? He's 16 and 9 in game number one. 16 and 9 for the man who's been searching for excellence. Formal with some nice shots once again. and. You can kind of take your pick from Optic Gaming of who's been yep. playing well so Look far this stats. tournament. I mean, the stats, as you say, back it up. But once again, it's Cloud9 here who are having to do work on their side of the map. Optic continually pressurizing as Penguin finally works with Bound to clear out Lucid and Trippy. And Cloud9 might be able to get up to that 50 yard line. APG was last alive. He actually will be taken down formal as your first spawner here in the utility. But doing very well to guard the connection. C9 finally trying to flood forward. Optic. Now inside of their base, can they take advantage of this situation? No, no, APG shuts the door on bound. Trippy last player alive for just a second as well. That two flight cushion gonna come in handy here. Trippy now takes the heat wave out to the dynamo side of the map and he'll grab those as a reward. One player who's having a little bit of a rough start to this series is someone who's looked pretty impressive in the last series. That's Stella, currently sat 9 and 17, maybe just struggling to find a little bit of rhythm. Maybe he's just running into players like Trippy. It's a 1v1 at the moment which Stella will come out on top of. The Heatwave not going to be quite the weapon needed in that situation to try and bend some bullets around walls. But Stella now moving forward. C9 on the offensive once more. Lucid taken down. Stella now being a little bit of a nuisance on those straight stairs. But look how quickly Optic yeah. Gaming just collapse on those kills. C9 once again find themselves three dead. Eco, he's the last player alive and he might go down soon as well. Last player alive and he was a spawner. So that's another rotation yet again. This is a continuation. How often have we talked about how Optic is so precise on the timing in between their kills. They're doing it again here in game number one. 3.30 left in the game. He's trying to chase down a couple of kills bottom middle. Eco's gonna be there, APG with the help as well. Two down on either side at the moment. And keep in mind, the game clock is starting to become somewhat of a factor here as yeah. well as we approach. Three minutes left in this game. Now keep in mind as well, even though Cloud9 have been on the back foot for the majority of this game, on Aquarius, we have seen the opportunities to double cap even within 30 seconds. So that clock, even though it's dwindling down, do not count Cloud9 out of this situation, especially as we saw what happened in that previous series on Catalyst. That's right. Never count them out here. Still three minutes to play and only two flags needed to send this game into overtime. But plays like that for the formal are going to make things difficult. Another thing that you and I were talking about here, nice job double for Stellar. Take it down though by formal yet again. The man is part of the base. Eco will still start the run. Eco putting a lot of trust in Bound here. You can see he's trying to force that one out of the front of the base. Bound was sat up top mid, trying to give him that cover fire. And now you have Bound doing what he does best. That is causing problems for the opposition. He's on the flank, but they've got to pick up a couple more kills here. Trippy will be in position to at least slow this run down, but with two players still in the death screen, Stella's gonna go for that touch and he's gonna keep that flag alive. Big kill for Trippy. Trippy knew that that was the biggest threat for a flag grab. Trippy isolates that kill and he gets it. Now it's two dead for Cloud9 as a result. APG on that return. APG not quite able to send it home. Lucid, you've got some work to do here. Bound's gonna try and challenge as he's gonna decide instead of the flag to pick up that camo. C9 decides the flag is the play and that is the power up now in the hands of Optic, but there is Stella to take down Lucid top middle, and that flag has been sent home. So C9, through all the hard work, cannot get that flag back to base. Two dead. Well, they take down Formal as well on the back. Trippy and Lucid now pushing across pink. Eco's got this one back to his courtyard. Bound and Penguin in the kill feed as well. Optic are just gonna have to watch this flag go in from the death screen as one minute 30 strikes. So to Cloud9, I mentioned the double cap. Penguin's thinking about it. What do we say here? Watch the kills on the board. This will determine if the C9 run continues. Two dead. Optic answers back and slows down what could have been a second run there. Ah. Lucid's getting fried at the moment by well, those dynamo grenades. Trippy's gonna have to try and rotate back in through the pink side of his base to clear it out and make sure that no one from Cloud9 is in a position to get another flag ball. Four more gonna clear a little bit of room for him though. Stella trying to scupper away and manages to just about do so. But Formal's chasing him down, and now Cloud9 with three players down are inside of the last minute of this game. Cloud9 need to win this next team fight if they want to go forward. If Optic win it, they might win the game. That was your last player alive. 
D goes down as well. Now Ico goes down three dead again. Sour last player alive. Cloud9 is in the blender. Optic just gonna hold on for a few moments here. Stella trying to escape. Trippy saying, come here, boy. It's time for you to have a little sleep as well. Eco and Penguin. They just come off respawn. APG running this flag home. And don't worry about a 2-1 win here, Optic fans, because APG might be about to make it three. Optic go on three to one with 20 seconds left. What a time to do it. That is the dagger, and it's three dead as well. APG gonna wait for this thrust here to close out the last 15 seconds of play. 15 seconds to go here. Cloud9, even with the ability they have, you don't see this Stella happening. Stella knows it. He's focusing on game number two for Optic Gaming. It's the perfect start to a grand final. They go up one to zero over Cloud9. You heard the desk talk about just how big game number one would be. Oh boy, here's the green wall. Woo! They'll take game number one in a dominant fashion. Three to one on the scoreboard. Business as usual for Optic Gaming. Strange that we see that in front of the main stage. The only time we normally see that, Gold Boy did that earlier yeah. in, the, in the back in the green room. Which we know is hard to believe, but you'll have to take our word for it. Let's take a look at the stats then. Formal at the top of the kills leaderboard. I mean, Matthew on. Piper. 29 of 15 and 13 and i just want to take a little second to talk about formal because we were discussing if there was anyone who maybe felt themselves had a point to prove after the performance of kc for optic yeah. formal was that man the words coming from him himself in that interview post event he looks like he's a man on a mission here. he really does take a look at the damage as well wow. 7400 there for formal also 7000 club for trippy these guys we're laying down some serious fire. As you were saying, if you caught that episode of the process from Optic Gaming, you saw just how heartbreaking that loss was in Kansas City, and they didn't like how it happened. They have a chance to rewrite history here at HCS Orlando, and here's some highlights from that game number one. A little triple kill coming in from Lucid, just to clear out the base was always gonna put him on the right track, in the right mind, to take the fight to Cloud9. That first cap that went in was trippy stepping up the second one was formal and the final one was APG if you needed an indication of how the team is working so well together when you've got three different players capping three different flags I'll take a roll in that sequence from Lucid might really sum it up does damage on one player stops the flag run kills the second player then goes and gets camo and continues to run the map optic gaming creating so much space for themselves and it felt like they truly had one to two dead on Cloud9 the entire game. It was really great map management from the side of Optic Gaming. We've learned anything though, there is still a long, long way to go. Of course, this is a best of seven, moving over from the best of fives that we've had so far in the tournament. So Cloud9 will know that, and they'll know with one win here on Live Fire Slayer, the series will be tied up on one to one. Plus, I think Optic will know this as well. They've been watching the series today, right? They've seen some game fives, reverse sweeps, 50-49s in those Slayers. They'll be as focused as anyone, but this is the next battleground here. Live Fire Slayer. Question is, are we going to have a tied series or Optic? Going to take one more step forward. And let's not forget, there was a moment there where Cloud9 could have back-to-back -back capped, right? But Optic Gaming, they step up in that situation. Here's a Slayer comparison for Trippy and Penguin. So, again, you can, the Optic crowd, by the way, is so loud. I've got my headphones turned up to a billion, which is a, a technical term. And I can still hear them at the moment. They wait, are just wait. screaming in here. Don't worry about what you're seeing on we your got too many players the on the left side of the screen. Don't worry about it. I mean, potential transfer start a vicious rumor that Bound's going to transfer to Optic. <laughs> because, because of that lobby. Let's not do that. But I mean, what, a, what an opportunity this is to talk about tripping. We saw the stats, right? Because yeah. it, it feels like we're taking, you could just pick a player from this tournament, anyone on Optic, and you can say, OK, they did this. They did this big play. They've done that big play. Tripping with the shock rifle. We saw him earlier hitting everything. and. It's difficult to, to stop any player on Optic at the moment. I've, it's kind of the continuation of what we saw in the NA Super, right? The first time that we watched them when we were like, this is different because they're not just winning. They are beating people. Yeah. And they are beating them with teamwork, with precision, and by considerable margins as well. And as we said, their season truly has led up to this point. I mean, think back to Kansas City. The story was they're winning online. Can they win on land? They fell short there. And you saw just how much it meant to the team. You heard the words from Formal saying that he was checked out after that game against Sentinels. Instead, they now find themselves in such a different position here with a 1-0 lead in the Grand Finals and only three games away from a championship. And trust me, people who are watching in the arena, people who are watching at home, all these things we're talking about, 
Optic players that are on that stage, they know it better than anyone. Oh, do they ever. So if C9 come out firing in this map number two and tie up the series, all those thoughts will start to come back in. We're live here in game number two. Trippy the POV will watch it. He's going straight for that sniper. Let's see what Optic could do off the opening. Trippy maybe gets away with the sniper he does and the assist. It's nice work to escape with wow. a power weapon and a 3-1 lead. Yeah, what an opening strategy that is from Optic Gaming. Like you say, a 3-1 to one trade, make it 4-1 to one plus the F7, everything you would have wanted. Almost the perfect opening strategy. Trippy's gonna go window here, look for those garage routes. Playing really sneaky here, not getting too aggressive. Wants to just tuck in the corner Ooh. and deal some damage, but he will see two teammates fall. Unfortunately for Chip, Trippy didn't quite find the back of the head with that shot, it was the, the left cheek. He found from Eco as Optic do lose a couple of players here. Bomber's gonna collect that sniper rifle. Bound is gonna oh. keep him under pressure. The remote detonation not good enough to take him down, but the help from APG will. Now we see ourselves at just a one kill game, but the pace of this game is very interesting off yeah. the rim. Leave it to formal to have the patience there. Shoot those days, but now Eco with an overshot push. Here he comes on green and nest. And Eco now is gonna be the focal point for the Cloud9 death ball, but it's going to be slowed down a little bit. But you can see Lucid managed to pick one up. APG has no idea of this positioning coming in from Eco. Lucid manages to trade out that kill, and it will be C9 who go three down here, and Optic into a two kill lead, even though they didn't have that overshield. Yeah, very well done there. It's a great response from Optic, and oh my god, imagine spawning in the dummies with Lucid looking at you with a plasma pistol. That is a death wish, and it will result in still a two-kill optic gaming lead, but Cloud9 has done well to keep this one close. Bound picks up one. Oh my Lucid picks up two. It's a killing spree for him. There's another player above him as well. He covers him in a little bit of plasma pistol. And his teammate comes in to finish it off as well. So at 15 to 11, now a four-kill difference between the two teams. Next point of focus for both these teams is going to be that overshield. You can run, but you can't hide from Lucid. I think that's one thing we've learned. And my god, do they ever hate this new combo right now because he is absolutely running around the map. Corner to corner for this. Making a double kill. The confidence coming in from Lucid. He is just running at Cloud9 at the moment. And we talked about how much momentum that C9 might have had. Look at Formal on the flank, picks up one. Teammates pick up two. Still has some overshot to play with as well. You talked about the blender right now. C9 are feeling it. They cannot get out at the moment. And Optic are just collapsing with those numbers. Finally, Formal will be taken down back tower. But here comes the follow-up damage. Lucid oh. trying to do it. can put that thing down, Lucid. Hold the phone. Lucid is 11 and 2 right now. Unbelievable from this man just running the noob combo up against Cloud9. Sniper rifle next point of focus. Five seconds. You can see the game finally has slowed down for just a few seconds. And I think for everyone that's a good idea because we need to catch our breath. Stella versus Lucid. Who's going to come out on top? Are you surprised at this point that Lucid does? Not at all. Gonna try oh boy, thought about doing it. And one thing that you and I talked about. Mark is the fact that Cloud9 will be coming in with a lot of momentum off that big win in Catalyst CTF, but my god, has Optic Gaming ever slowed that momentum down completely in both Game 1 and now also in Game 2. A 10 kill difference between the two teams. And C9 now trying to posture to get into a position when they're not going to be traded out straight away. Eco and Stella get kills. Optic try and flood in as well. They want to keep this pressure on and Penguin and Bound just trying to survive here. Heatwave for Bound. Is it going to be enough to get one? Yes, but there is that trade again from Lucid. Oh. Be, oh boy, Stellar though answers back. He will finally be taken down. 2v2 on the map. Formal eats a grenade. Somehow stays alive for now. Two players, no shields, no problem. Formal takes down Eco. And you got to think Optic Gaming very happy with trades at this point here. 10 kill lead. Penguin. Ooh, ooh, ooh no. Does not grab the overshield. It's a great team shot from Optic Gaming. And Lucid's got himself the plasma pistol once more. Bound, you got an overshield, but I don't know what I prefer at the moment. Overshield in the hands of Bound or Lucid with the plasma pistol. It seems like Bound is going to come out on top of that battle. Maybe it's a way back into this for C9. Too dead for Optic Gaming, but they've got to do what Optic did to them. They've got to keep that pressure on. Trade's no longer an option here for C9. That's right, this game's not over yet. Oh, Bound actually gets the best of formal there with the back smack. Rare that you see something like that. It's only now a six kill game. They get five. Two players, three players trapped at the back of green as well here for Optic. So C9, if they can get damage down, might be able to collapse as well. That lead, which is established, is starting to slowly evaporate. Formal with some great shots from back green, though. 
to create the opening. Penguin still trying to keep that pressure off for C9. Formal's gonna come out with another one as well. And Formal almost single-handedly here is getting Optic out of this spawn trap. Oh my god, Formal 13 and 8 in this game right now. And like you said, it's a great team shot from Optic Gaming that gets them out of the back green spawns. But C9 keeping that pressure on. Optic doing a great job of trading, but C9 getting a little bit closer than they were a few moments ago. The problem here for C9, though, is they've only got five deaths to play with. Was three dead for Cloud9 off the respawn. Let's go off with Chance. We're back in the arena here. Home stretch. Four more kills for Optic Gaming to close this out. C9 flood top middle. Might be trying to isolate a player that they found, but Stella, he's going to be isolated himself. Another couple of trades come in. Optic just need one. They're one new up in the series. It's just about where that 50th kill is. Three spawns, nest spawns. It doesn't look good. Spawns for the side of Cloud9. Damage out of APG, as you say. Only one more kill to close it out. Bound picks up one, but the overshield coming up at this side of the map completely controlled by Optic surely means it's just a matter of time. But here comes the push from Cloud9. Lucian with the 50th. Gaming up by two. And at this point in the tournament, they have never looked better. Never looked better is right. Look at the damage out of this team. How many times do we see them just traveling in packs? Every single time you see shots on a player, it's cleaned up by another player from Optic Gaming. And they are so efficient with those assists right now. They will now lead the series to zero. So now the pressure very much on the shoulders of Cloud9. Coming into this final, Optic knew what they had to do. You could say the pressure was all on them coming into this tournament, but now with a two game advantage, having won that winner's bracket final, all they have to think about now is winning two more games of Halo to call themselves a champion. 16 and eight there from Lucid, 15 and 11 from Formal, taking a look at the damage as well. 38-91 formal in the end. They will close it out 50 to 41 in a very comfortable game number two. And like you said, this is the best they've ever looked. And I think on the optic side of the stage, they know that, but they also know the job is not done. So many moments we can talk about in that game where Optic had that great start. They got that big lead established where they really did a great job of collapsing on those Cloud9 spawns and keeping them separated off spawn, but I want to talk about that moment where three players were trapped up back green from, yeah. uh, from Optic Gaming. Cloud9 had fought their way into position to get a three or four dead. Sometimes you're looking across the stage, right? And you're looking at a player for a little bit of experience, a little bit of now on how to deal with these situations. Who's the last man standing who comes out swinging, gets two, three kills? His name is Formal. He's been here before. That man on your screen right there, this was just after that sequence as he ends that and pushes out a green. Like you said, it's a great team shot from green on to Nesbridge to catch Cloud9 off guard, comes off the spawn like a demon and helps them win the game 50 to 41. The green wall now leading 2 to 0 as we set our sights on King of the Hill Recharge. King of the Hill Recharge. Interesting change of pace. We have that fixed objective you have to capture to get those points on the board. Of course, four, first of four points will win. Unless that time expires and there is a pure doggo. A pure She's doggo. back again. She's very happy to see APG and the green wall leading two to zero. And Optic fans have showed up in a big way here at ACS Orlando, to say the very least. There's still some work to do for Optic, but trust me, when your energy gets a little bit low, as a team, you've been on that main stage for quite some time. There is nothing better than looking out onto that crowd and have that energy thrown back at you. It gives you that lift that you're definitely looking for. Yeah, I was going to say, this is not just like an Optic Gaming section. It feels like half of the venue is yeah. dedicated to the Optic Gaming Green Wall here as they have showed up, as we said, in a huge way. It's been an unbelievable crowd here in Orlando all weekend long, and they've never been louder. And Optic Gaming themselves have never looked better. It's true. Every single time we have an event at the moment, it seems like wherever the last event was, the next event tries to beat them, right? Yeah. And we were back in KC. We had that crazy home crowd, and now we have this Optic-based crowd who are getting even louder. Worlds is just around the corner. Three weeks away. Three weeks away. I wonder if the noise is going to be there because people have been, have been waiting for that all year long. It's going to be absolutely all year long. Pandemic. We had three, four years, years, whatever it was. We've been waiting for this moment for many years, and I think that the green wall, as you now hear behind us, starting to erupt again. They've been waiting for this moment for a very long time as well. 
And my God, you have to think, the players on stage here, they know what this means for the momentum that they would take going into the World Championship. Not to mention, by the way, about $140,000 in cash yeah, for a for you know, first place. The prize pool for this tournament, thanks to crowdfunding, we bumped it up to 350 k which is absolutely ridiculous going into Worlds as well, the biggest money event of the year. But for now, as the players get ready to head into our game number three, I mean, Cloud9, it's been a long day for them. It's been a very grueling road for them, but this is a game type where I feel like maybe if they're gonna turn it around, there's an opportunity to do so. Certainly, and one thing we know about Cloud9, and we don't say this about every single team in the HCS, but Cloud9 is a team, and Optic Gaming will know this better than anyone. You cannot give them any room cannot allow them to come back into the series because guess what? These guys are fierce. They will run this series. They will gladly send you to a bracket reset. In fact, I think nothing would make them happier. And they are ready to go. So Optic Gaming knows that they need to close out this series quickly and not give any room for the idea of a Cloud9 comeback. Now I'm back on the stage, C9. Look like they're ready to lock back in to the games that we have ahead of us. Maybe just a little mental reset that is required. Sometimes you just need to step away from the intensity of the situation and remind yourself this is just a game of Halo. Right. That's what we heard so many times, time and time again from Optic Gaming in these interviews. Because they keep winning series, we keep seeing them interviewed on main stage. They said, we need to remember these are the exact same games, the exact same opponents we play online when we win these events. There's no reason we can't come here and do the same exact thing. So far, they've done exactly that. What's the key here for Cloud9? You uh, step back into the coaching uh, shoes a little bit earlier on, back into the coaching hairstyle, I should say, as well. I did, thank you. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you've been there before yourself. You've been in these situations with teams. What's going through their mind? And what do you have to say as a player or a coach? Or what's some words of advice you've heard to really get your team back focused into a series like this? I think if we look at this series so far, Cloud9 has played the entire game uh, for both games on the back foot, right? They've gone down to early deficits. And I think that's really cost them because Optic Gaming, they're firing on all cylinders. They're a bit too tough of an opponent to take down from behind right now. I think if you're on the side of Cloud9, it needs to look at those opening strats, right? Let's not go down early. Let's play our game. Let's dictate the pace instead of being forced to play catch up for the entire game. I think that's going to be the huge key as to whether or not C9 can get back in this. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think they got to do a little bit better job of just hunting down that fourth kill as well. We've seen them get two or three kills from Optic and that last kill just kind of surviving three seconds too long for someone to get back onto the map and help them back out of them in that team fight. And that's the difference, right? We always mention it. It was one of your favorite things you noticed in the super, the speed of kill one and kill four before a clean white coming in from Optic Gaming. Nobody's done it better in recent time. Absolutely not. If we talk about Cloud9, look at the way they played the phase series, right? They were on fire. They're really being the first one to deal the damage. They're capitalizing on that damage. That's what we saw against FaZe. That's what won them the series. In overtime on Catalyst CTF, we haven't yet seen that from them, that brilliance from them in the grand finals. Let's see if game number three is their game. Maybe we're gonna see a little bit of that Cloud9 brilliance now. Maybe we're gonna see them reignite this series. We're back underway here in Orlando. It's game number three of the series. Optic two to zero up. King of the Hill recharge. Loose at the man on your screen. Maybe the most talked about player on Optic Gaming and for a very good reason. Look at that KD 1.69 in this series. Little early wins like that from Stellar are going to be big though. He's inside of that hill and he's got that camouflage and he picks up a double onto Formal. Little things like that, like you talked about, winning that opening break. Just reminding yourselves that you can put Optic Gaming on the back foot. Look at this, C9 ran the same exact strategy that we saw earlier, right? They put Camo in hill and it could be a huge difference maker, but Optic Gaming shuts it down right away before 20 points get on the board. Map control here for C9 as well. A couple of kills in their favor and of course, most importantly, a little bit of time on the board. They currently have Optic with two players in that depth screen as well. So don't be surprised to see a couple more points put on the board as Penguin has to fight against these two Optic players just flooding around back blue instead gonna back down, wait for the help coming in from Stella before they re-challenge. It looks like they might be able to couple, catch a couple players off guard. Penguin finds one, Trippy goes for a swim, and Formal sends Penguin to maybe join him. Great, great, look at that, back and forth, two dead for each side. What a good little jaunt in the back of the bases. We see two teams who take each other out. Traditionally in this series, Optic Gaming has been winning those 2v2s and those baiting and switches, but now Bound has the shock rifle in hand and he's ready to lose the damage. Unfortunately for that Optic player, it's like they got hit by, in the side by a truck as yes. that 
Shock rifle connected with the head. And look at the amount of information that's just been picked up here by Bound as well. Lucid doesn't care though. Lucid's gonna challenge the shock rifle now down. And Lucid takes a step inside of the hill for the first time for all. Take three dead. Stellar is your last player alive. Let's take a look and see. He's stuck in control. He cannot stop the points from going on the board for the side of Optic Gaming. And they will collapse without trading a kill. Very efficient from Optic Gaming. Efficient, but look at this push now coming in from C9. Three players fall from Optic. Eco gonna step into that hill with a teammate. Once again, doubling up on that hill. To make sure that angles are cut off, but there's that commando from Trippy just oh, shredding fine. away at Eco. Trippy on the flank picks up two. Great play from Trippy. Do, 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 do. That thing hitting so hard in the back. It stops all the points from the board from Cloud9 and also great shots from Formal as well. Look at how important just that damage from Trippy alone was in the end. Well, we're gonna have some work to do though. He's got Eco flying at him. He deals with him. Bound and Penguin though. They're in the kill feed, lighting up for Cloud9, but Stella finds himself now as last alive for C9. It's going to be a one thing around the back of this box, but Stella decides it's best to just survive for now. The cover fire comes in from Eco. Nobody's stepping foot in that hill at the moment because they don't have the kills to do so, but look how close this is at the moment. A slender lead here for Cloud9, but Stella with those two kills allows Eco to step back in. Great play from Stellar. He takes his time around bottom. Repulsor Tunnel stays alive. Eco does the damage from Bad Ledge, and Stellar flanks around. That will keep two dead. This should be a C9 point here. Optic Gaming trapped inside Elevator as well. So the worrying thing for them as C9 get that first point on the board is that C9 are in position to maybe start locking down this long haul as well. Two players from Optic flooding. Eco trying to survive. He's dipping, he's diving, he's grappling. He's swinging his way out of trouble. Now he's gonna have the flank too. This is a big battle going down. Formal versus Eco on this long range C platter needles. EPG is there to help him out in the long haul as well, but he's currently trapped. It looks like C9 might have control along. They do, and they're starting to find form here. Let's get ready for an astral. Listen in with Cloud9 as they've taken the lead in the game. Oh, we just get hill. There's two going solo, two going solo. He blasts, he blasts. Yeah, we're here, we're here, we're here. We're here, on the box. On the box. One shot, no, one shot, no, the box. One shot, one shot. Two there, two there, two there, two there. Multiple. Two there, two there. 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 Let's jump out of the Astro listening. Optic Gaming currently scrapping, fighting desperately for this hill, but C9 giving as good as they got. And this is the intensity of C9 in this listening. And Cloud9 undoubtedly looking like a different team in this game, number three. Despite heroic efforts from Formal there to stay alive for so long, they've started to shut him down. They have a two-man advantage yet again, and they're very close to closing out point number two. Eco as well has that shock rifle in the hill, so anyone is going to be challenging. It's going to be a little bit of a risky play because Eco has the ability to rip your head off, but he doesn't need to for now because they're going to be two to zero up Cloud9. Optic finally being tested here. Cloud9 are back alive in the series. This is the signs of life that we said we needed to see from Cloud9. We wondered if we'd see that C9 brilliance, and it has now shown up in a big way. Eco finds the last one bottom mid as well. And if you've just joined in, this looks like a totally different C9 team. It does as well, and the worrying thing here for Optic as well is even though they lost that hill, the next one is the Elevator Hill. You would argue this is the easiest one to lock down, the most secure to lock down as a team, and C9 almost managed to break them on that rotation, but for good reasons here, Optic are going to be happy as well, because Optic and now have held off that push. It looks like they're scoring, and look how quickly that hill is going up. Two dead, C9 should be able to break here on paper. Let's see if they can get through. Yes, last player alive is up top elevator. If they get this kill, they will be a full break. This will now be points on the board, but not a lot of room for error for C9. Take a look at that point. Full break, like you say. Optic will only have to break once, but Penguin not only He's part of the Cloud9 gang that have got this elevator area on lockdown. They have camo, and Stella has that shot rifle too. If they're gonna get back into this game, oh no. this is the opportunity oh, oh, oh. to do so. Two dead on the cross. 
for Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming, they take their time. They do a triple push across glass, and it doesn't work. C9 will continue oh. scoring, and he hits the remote detonation on Formal as well. This will be a guaranteed point for C9. Formal steps on a landmine and gets blown to smithereens. C9, three up. One more hill to go. And the series will be two to one. Running an absolute masterclass here on King of the Hill Recharge. Finally, two members of C9 will be taken down, make it three. And it's an opening for Optic Gaming. Can you imagine if they brought this game back? Look at Mount. He's got those Astros cranked up oh. to a thousand, but Lucid's got his commando locked onto him instead. Wins that important fight. C9 now two dead. It looks like Optic is set up around this Repulsa Tunnel Hill. Lucid turns on him, and after the back of that kill, that will be three dead. Eco, one last player alive. Ballinger next spawner. It's great damage from Lucid yet again. Hello. Finally, he'll be taken down, though. It's another two men advantage for C9. C9 looking to break this hill once more. Trippy. Take some damage still against the trade. Penguin there to help out Eco stay alive. Last player alive within the vicinity is going to be APG. And look at this oh. sneaky decision from Eco. He knows the repulsor is an opportunity. Lines that jump up with the sword platform. So even if he gets hit by it, he's not going to sink. You called it perfectly. That's brilliant from Eco. He knew that someone would be expecting the repulse. But APG wanted Eco to drop down. Instead, he takes a perfect angle and the repulsor would not even be a factor. And it's moments like that, plays like that, that have given a 3-0 lead to Cloud9. Now, with less than two minutes left, game number three. Oh, and Eco! Oh, Trippy! Trippy, the trapeze artist! Repulsa pushed him off, but he held off for dear life then. Oh my god, Grapple's right back up there, and what a time to have one Grapple remaining. He's now gonna have Repulsa as a reward as well. This one's not over yet, but we would need it. Absolutely incredible play from Optic Gaming. They're also two dead here. Trippy absolutely locked in as well. Penguin now. Going to be challenging him back silo. Trippy can hear him, but Trippy can't find him. It's a sneaky, sneaky penguin. And bound is the camo as well. So even though, much like we saw on this previous hill, Optic out to a great start. Lots of time on the board. The Securing that camo and securing a little bit of map positioning might be Cloud9's opportunity back in. Bound eventually taken down with the camo. Does well to make sure he gets the one kill. On formal. Eco with some creative angles there to go all the way down to Mangler Pit as well. And now we'll rotate back to Hydro. Still two dead for Optic. One minute 15 left in the game as well. Optic three dead, but Formal still inside of that hill. But Bound deals with him. Bound gets him out with that back smack. And now you can see C9 with a full setup for the first time around this Repulsa Hill. They'll have the information of where the Optic push is coming in. That's why you're seeing C9 turn their attention to Tower. C9 loves it. Oh, nice little angle there to take down APG in the control corner as well. They'll also take down Formal. Another two-man advantage. This has been slaying dominance from Cloud9. They're just waiting and they're baiting on this last hill. Trippy says, I'll take the 1v1. He's got the Repulsa, but there's Penguin. Position just quick enough to make sure it wasn't a straight 1v1. Penguin picks up two as well, and now he's looking for more. A couple of players trying to burst through the tower. Formal stays alive. Lucid, you won't though. Yes, he will somehow. Penguin on the hump of Formal oh finishes off what he started. And now Trippy, dare you challenge? Probably not. Look at what Cloud9 is doing to Optic Gaming. 30 seconds left. Look at the stats. Eco, 20 and 14. Penguin, 22 and 13, dismantling the green wall in game number three. And the interesting thing here is Cloud9 have changed their strategy now. They're not worried about winning on the hill. Yeah. They want to send a message to Optic Gaming. They are going to try and slay them out as Stella. Once again, shows his gymnastic prowess with that grapple. No, no nice grapple. little he headshot as well as he goes for that camo too. No more grapples to snag the camo, but with seven seconds left, he's not going to worry about it. Here we go, the time ticks down. Time ticks down. Optic, after two games, might have thought this might be an easy road, but remember, they're up against Cloud9, the guardians of that trophy. C9 answer back, and it's two to one now. A one game lead for Optic. And what did we say? Do not count this Cloud9 team out. They're right back in this series. It's a dominant game three, not just a win. That is a statement, as you said. I mentioned before this game, as we take a look at some of the stats, by the way, Penguin, I said right at the start of this tournament, West Coast Buff, man, this guy's gonna be dangerous. 23 and 14. Penguin turning up when C9 needed the most. Absolutely enormous. Eco, as we said, also 20 and 15. And Bound, of course, with 13 assists to his name, not to mention also going positive three, the entire C9 roster.
positive in that game. It's a 3-0 win on Recharge King of the Hill. And ladies and gentlemen, we now have ourselves a grand final. And now I mentioned some of those thoughts. Optic, been here before, probably thought this is looking a little bit too easy. This is what we call a little bit of a mental test for them now. As C9 dominate game at number three. All that will be forgotten if Optic and Answer back and got three to one in the series. But as we take a look at some of these replays, it's the style in which Cloud9 just returns to the series that worries me. And I agree. Optic actually played so many of these situations so well. You think back to the long haul hill, Optic was executing great. Formal staying alive, baiting kills. He was about 10 and 6 at that point. Great numbers, but still Cloud9. They hold the gas pedal forward, they time their pushes and hold perfectly. They will win 3-0. to zero. Now bring the series just within one game. And now we have arguably the fastest and most unforgiving game type in the entirety of the map mode combos we have in the Halo Championship Series. It's Strongholds, it's Streets. And I gotta ask Andy, where's your money in this one? You're, you're crazy if you think I'm going to place a bet on this game right here. You refuse to do predictions at the start of the tournament. We are just so lucky to be here for these grand finals. Optic Gaming versus Cloud9. What a grand final it's been so far. And we're jumping on with Penguin after a great game number three. What can Cloud9 do? Can they answer back and tie the series 2-2? Two to two? Or will we see Optic Gaming take a 3-1 to one lead in a best of seven? We already mentioned how important the opening is for both the teams in both games that we've seen. C9 getting the better of Optic in that previous game. Gave them the tools to play with. Off the break here, it looks like the advantage will go to Optic. Trippy has managed to steal him, get those rockets. But he needs to deal with Bound, taking down to no shields, but manages to just about escape. And most importantly, has a rocket, but no. There's the great communication coming in. There's that man Penguin. Oh, great communication, as you said. There, he would have gotten the call up. There was a player coming into the commando. Free fires the rocket, picks up the kill. That will be a BC hold early on for Optic Gaming. But Penguin will start to flip C. Yeah, it was a momentary, very, very momentary triple cap, actually, for Optic. Just as Cloud9 managed to flip. Now they're playing the end, so you're going to see Pink Street Control be very important. As to the areas of the map that try to be locked down by Cloud9, trying to pin. Optic Gaming in towards Strong that B stronghold. It looks like Optic have broken through to A here. The hold not good enough here from C9. Keep an eye on the Stalker Bulldog combo. It is going to be a factor in this entire game without a doubt. Optic fans reminding C9 that they are here in the building in a big way. And Penguin just controlling this commando area. Such a nuisance dealing with this player. You know how he can influence not only the fights that go down at C, but also the fights that go down at B and A with the lines of sight that you do have. Give the man a stalker, and you can see why Penguin is playing at this pace as well. Optic wow. desperate to get rid of him, but look at the damage he's doing. Look at that, and respect from Lusa there, knowing that Penguin with the stalker rifle can make very quick work of you. That was free dead for Cloud9. Stellar was your last player alive. He's now top A. To be able to flip this as well, Optic put a lot of resources into Dealing with Penguin inside of that C stronghold. stronghold managed to do so, but as you say, just lets that rotation now come in, which keeps Cloud9 scoring. Rockets are going to be coming up, and it looks like Stellar actually is going to leave those for a teammate to maybe pick up on their way through. Eco and Trippy going to trade kills. C9 with the numbers on the map at the moment, but Formal looking to even that one up. C9 2 dead, and it's going to be Optic once again. You have to fight so hard just to get control of that B stronghold. Yeah, Lucid's trying at rockets here, not able to do so. so has to actually rotate around back to B stairs. Rockets are still up bottom middle here. Nobody can get hold of them. Nobody can get an angle on them. Lucid's just trying to survive for now, and Stella's going to put him on his back. APG He's trying to fire onto that rocket holder, but there is bound. Two rockets fired, though. He only managed to pick up one kill along the way, but it will be scoring still here for Cloud9 as they're about to flip over B. They don't! Oh, they they got a reset from APG! APG off screen was your last player alive for Optic Gaming, and he gets a huge reset on B. Optic Gaming will continue scoring. You should with that Bulldog inside of tires as well. You played enough of Halo Infinite, at some point you've died to that combination of location and weapon. Lose it now, two shots to Eco. Make sure that B will go back into the hands of Optic. It's a tie game, and now you see Optic just slide into the most slender of leads. A big, big factor. And contributor there, look at APG, he's 9-4 and four in this game, not to mention the reset that we just saw on screen. This might just be APG's tournament, he's looking better than ever. The way that Lucid's playing at the moment, very slow, very meticulous. And the reason for that, he's controlling the weapons, he's controlling the sandbox here for Optic Gaming. You give the Stalker and the Bulldog back over to Cloud9, you've already seen 
what they can do with it. But if you've got them in your hands, you can pick up easy kills like that and do a huge oh amount of damage. Oh my gosh, look at the way the Lucid plays those angles. Perfectly times the Bulldog push, stays alive somehow. And even swaps out the Stalker. They will continue scoring AB 85 to 43 on the scoreboard. Two cap hold, it's been good for Optic. You can see they've almost doubled their lead. Or double the score, I should say, excuse me, over Cloud9. Looks like C9 are trying to get into A, but who else but APG is going to step in A and get that reset. Lucid puts a toe into C just to try and bait back a couple of players, and that secures the Rockets once again for Optic. That's two pick up in a row. Look at the dynamic duo, Lucid and Trippy both working together for their first event win. Oh. Second Rocket will not connect with the damage that comes in from the backfield. Now Lucid has rotated the driveway. This is where C9 have got to stay strong mentally though, right? Things haven't gone their way in the last few minutes. They've not had control of the weapons. They haven't had a huge amount of rocket presence as well. Bound with two, and Stella, even in the things that out is trippy as he takes down the silent assassin on the map. It's gonna be Optic who keeps scoring here with a BC hold. Eco was last player alive. That was huge for him to get that kill rather than falling. That will give them now some presence on B and an opportunity to try to regain control, but it's quite a deficit. Deficit, but it's not one that's out of control whatsoever. Lucid finally is going to lose that thrust, but no, it's not a back smack, it's a shoulder tap, which means the Optic will put Cloud 9 4 dead. Stellar's your first spawner. Huge swing of kills. Stellar's full PD. They weren't ready for the PD spawns. Maybe a blessing here for Cloud 9. Bounds fighting inside of B as well, but it's Trippy again with that Stalker rifle. He hits the shots required. And again, look at the flood coming in from Optic Gaming. On his way to the grave, Eco picked up one, but Formal with two keeps Trippy alive with that Stalker. So vital to lock down these lanes of sight on Street Strongholds. Bound finally, again, gets the weapon out of the hands of Optic. It really has been a huge outslaying difference in this game that has led to this Optic gaming lead. They're outslaying their opponents right now, 41 to 29 in total. But now you see the transfer of weapons, and this is where you're seeing C9 start to get back into the game. This is why I was talking about their mentality. You have to expect in these kind of games that when you don't have Stalker, Bulldog, Rockets, whatever it might be, there's going to be periods of damage management. But for now, it looks like the damage has been managed by Cloud9. They're scoring, holding both ends of the map, AC. And as you can see, Bound, well, he's got to think the box. Absolute bloodbath for that Bulldog over at Commando. Just kills being traded out back and forth. Two dead here for Optic. Looks like a research should come in on C as well from Eco. Stella with two in the feed. Had the Rockets. And look how the game is changing. Cloud9 with his two cap. Maybe looking to make a move onto B. The PD spawns are going to come in for Optic, which means that they should have access towards A, or maybe they're going to play a bit of Slayer. Try and get some kills before they think about that objective. C9 are scoring, and C9 are now into triple digits. Triple digits here now only down by 50 when it was down by about 90 plus earlier here. Cloud9 back in this game, like we said, never count them out. This team has been dominant on LAN all season long. They have no plans of slowing down here in Orlando. Oh, look at this angle from Lucid. He managed to just sneak past bottom middle. APG picks up one as well. Uh -huh. And here comes APG again. Uh -huh. APG with a commando. Absolutely shredding Eco. Oh now 1v1 here. Lucid versus Bound on your screen. Let's see what can happen. Oh, God. Lucid gets behind him somehow. That's a big win. Of course, he's got a drop shield as well. That's going to keep him alive what? even longer. And Lucid taking matters into his own hands. That will flip B off of his effort there. Not just B, but look at C as well. Cloud9 have scraped and clawed their way back into this game. But a triple cap here for Optic is going to make that score skyrocket. Oh my god, it looked like it was three dead for Optic and it was going to be Cloud9 control. Instead, Lucid wins the 1v1 and tees up formal for a remote detonation now. Optic Gaming looking at this home stretch potentially if they continue scoring. 200 points on the board for Optic, just 50 away now. C9 fighting just to get control of A at the moment. And Formal has things locked down with this Stalker rifle as well. Stella's going to have a little bit of a peek over the garden fence. But now Formal kind of left on an island. Two of his teammates have fallen. Cloud9 are inside of B and they flip the scoring back in their favor. But now we're entering the territory of the game, Andy, where you have to say that C9 don't have many missed opportunities left. They really don't hear maybe two or three pushes maximum should they lose control. And that would be best case. Oh no, Bound gets melted right away by the team shot of Optic Gaming. But he throws the Rockets back to C9, so he gets them back to the positions where his teammates can pick them up. A big push, a big moment in this game. If Stella can pick up these kills Ooh. with the Rockets, then maybe C9 can force their way back into this game, but they lose three players in the process. 
Oh, if Bound could do something here, it would oh be my huge. God, what? Are you what? kidding me? Picks up one, gets an assist on the other. That's a huge single play from Bound to keep C9 alive. The guy is moving like a ghostly spirit around the map at the moment. <laughs> Using that thrust perfectly to somehow get in a situation where he comes out with one kill and damage on another. But C9, again, they're closing in on this Optic Gaming score. They're fighting, they're clawing. They will not let this game go. Let's see what happens to be here. Formal, by the way, 16 and 11, huge numbers from him. But as you say, the job is not done yet. These next few kills will determine the score. Look at it, it's 215 to 203. Cloud9 has made the comeback. Call me crazy, this next team fight could be the game. First kill, massive. If it goes to the favor of C9, we might see a lead flip. It does go to the favor of C9, but here comes the push from Optic, but they lose three, and C9 go into a lead in the final moments of this game. Oh my god, only 25 points needed here. Trippy is the first one into B, still too dead for Optic. How does C9 play this? I want to see if they flip the map, they try and go for A. That looks like the play, pin them at B. Or instead, they're going to use it as a distraction. Stella's going to work with a teammate here towards B. This fight gets everything in this game. B is the fight. Trippy is alive on the pillar. Oh! with a double and the killing spree. APG last player alive. APG wins the 1v1 there. This is huge. Tie game here at 220. Big push coming in on B. Eco's inside of Red Room. Eco gets one. Eco's getting chased by Lucid. Lucid goes down as well. A massive double kill coming in from Eco. Stella is there as well. Three dead for Optic. And C9 are back in 2B. Formal gets rockets. There's Formal stay alive here. Stay alive. He gets away with the rockets here. Not over yet. Formal on the flank. Formal gets the trade, but is it enough? C9 have to make the play on C. Penguin on the flank, APG dealt with by Penguin! Lucid, he gets one as well! Bound is your last player alive for C9, how does he play this? Optic scoring, Optic from a man disadvantage, only five points away! Bound can't do anything, he cannot turn a stronghold over, and Optic will win! Game number four! Wow. With a man disadvantage, they closed that game out in the final moments. And what felt like a Cloud9 win is turned around at the last second by Optic Gaming to take a 3-1 to one lead. They are one game away from closing out your grand finals here at HCS Orlando. What a finish from Optic Gaming and how much have we talked about their late game much moments. Well, they've been practicing. It just goes to show, right, if you can focus on those moments, don't let the moment take control of you. Take control of the moment yourselves. That's where you win close games like that. Would have Optic have won that game a couple of months ago? Tough to say. Tough to say. But right now, right here in Orlando, against a spirited C9 side who gave it everything, we have to say, to turn that game around, it's Optic who come out on top. Formal there, just shy of 5,800 damage bound right there with him. In the end, it's really the slaying category that makes the difference. Optic will outslay 72 to 64 in total and secure a 250 to 230 win in an unforgettable stronghold streets. Now they set their sights on Catalyst Slayer, a potential tournament winning game type for them. One more game. That's all the Optic Gaming need to keep in mind. Get yourself 50 kills before C9 can, and you finally get your hands on that Halo Championship Series trophy, a major trophy, and a major step forward in their story ahead of the Halo World Champs. Formal and Bound on your screen. Formal wants to secure that win for two teammates who have never had a land win. On the other side is Bound, also searching for that same team. Here we are in map number five. Optic Gaming one game away from closing it out. Can Cloud9 stay alive? Such an interesting fact that we were a catalyst as well. We saw that crazy flag game that got Cloud9 to this position. Take yourself back to the NA Super. It was a, a crazy, crazy, Game 5 Slayer, where Cloud9 lost, so yep. C9 have 
experienced every emotion you could possibly imagine on this map. APG though off the rip here is going to have that overshield and he's going to be ripping away at all of C9 in the base. Oh boy, just picking him down one by one. It's a six to one lead here early on for Optic Gaming with three players spawning off of Cloud9. Let's see how they deal with this spawn with an Astro Gaming. Listen in, Optic Gaming. Okay, I will back. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Back up, back up. Pick up, pick up. Slip. Joey, just let me know if you hear footsteps. I, I can't see camera. That's fine, that's just... just I'm not sure across across We're starting to pick all guys. Joey's, Joey's somewhere watching our spikes as well. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Part two, go in the car hall. The car hall one eco. At least one. Going back. I'm gonna go back to car hall. Yeah, listen, try no, to get a pick. Yo, bait the fuck. Bait, 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 bait Joey. Bait for Joey. Bait for Joey. I'm looking at Joey. I'm turning Joey. You're just yeah. sitting. I gotta back Play safe. Yeah, yeah. You gotta play super safe, Brad. Yo, one's, there, one's going pink. I'm just hiding right here. Brad, Brad. You're right here. Yeah. Hide right here. Am I... Should I leave the spot or no? No, 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 no. Listen, let's... Somebody needs to watch Brad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still sitting here. We'll get the three. Three on that screen. Three on that pink. They're pushing towards pink. Hang on one second. Try to get a pick. On me, I think. No, no, you're good. You're good. Watch out, tell me, 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 watch out. I want to grab spikes. I want to grab spikes. Grabbing these. Backing up. I'm big right now. Hey, listen, I'm about to just start. I'm too much, 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 too Watch out, Tiller. Watch out, Tiller. Absolutely. We have one. Nice. Three. 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 That's him. That's him. Leave that guy for a second. We have one. We have one. You guys. You guys. Joey. 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 Here we go, Joey. Let's go, Joey. Joey, kill me. One shot. One shot. Blue door. Blue door. Blue door. We're not going to kill him, probably. Absolute door. Absolute door. Slow down. Just slow down. Going to, uh, keep using our numbers, guys. Yeah, yo, let's, go, let's go back to the car. They're going to the car. Skewer is up. Or, yeah, yeah, two there. They're the main in the car. It's up in 25. What's car one hiding on the fucking. Hiding on the fucking. Grab one. 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 We'll jump back into the game from the Astro listening. It's just a two kill game, but how big a moment could that have been? He's got cat ears on in this game bound, and he was climbing up that wall like a cat himself. I mean, unbelievable plays there from bound. The awareness there to fly out, trying to get the kill on Lucid instead of Trippy. This formal tries to close in. He gets one. Would have wanted more there, and you have to think with that overshot grab and the precision of the pushes there. It's a miracle that Cloud9 has kept the game this close, but now off the gaming up by four. Yeah, two in a row. Overshields. Coming in for Optic, C9 have got to think we can get hold of one of those, that's our way back into this game, but power-up control with the way that Optic are playing at the moment is very, very difficult, especially when they're shooting like this. That's four dead for Cloud9. It's a seven-kill advantage for Optic Gaming. What a swing there. It was just a three-kill lead. It is now a four-kill lead with that full wipe. APG with the spikes as well. Eco yet to be on the board here. Seven kills. That's the big lead here in the Grand Finals. Oh, APG spiking things out. Just a trade though. Trippy trying to come in to finish off some damage, but he's got to be careful here. He knows there's three players from Cloud9 in front of him. Lose it down to no shields, but position himself beautifully to make sure that he can get back in. And there is that new combo once again. Lose it. A little bit different with that weapon in his hands. Absolutely. Oh, oh my. It's got the skewer. You heard Lunchbox timing it as well to make sure they would have that weapon in their hand. Overshot also up right now. All eyes going to be bottom middle. Nico gets the first pick though. Pound trying to challenge, trying to position himself, trying to take the attention of Formal away from maybe a player making a move onto that overshield. Oh. Looks like Trippy managed to pick it up. He had the grapple, so the call was from Optic. Trippy's gonna grapple this one. He makes it work, but he's getting shredded at the moment. APG trying to flood in with Bound. Trippy trying to stay alive. C9, three overshields in a row they can't get. And that's why the deficit seems to be getting wider and wider. Optic controlling the fundamentals of Halo here, and it's resulting in a 24 to 16 lead. Absolutely beautiful play from Trippy there. He tanks all of that damage with the overshield, and he's happy to do so because he created all these openings, just baiting out the positions and the damage from Cloud9. That will take them four dead again. Now 24. 4 to 17 in this game. As a reminder, Optic Gaming wins this. They win the championship. Round gets caught out there. A bit of a free kill in that situation. Just couldn't quite hit the slide he wanted to to get back around that wall. Stellar and tr Lucid trade out a couple of kills. Bound answers back. Back on the right side of that scoreboard now with the kill himself. There's the grapple. 
Formal's flying, but he can't get in position to finish off that kill. Bound as well, he gets snapped on a killing spree in a game where Optic need Formal most. How about Formal? Eight and two in a game that they're winning by eight. Unbelievable stats from him. We talk about him as one of the most consistent FPS players of all time. He's doing it yet again here in Orlando. 29, 21, six minutes on the clock. And he kills the difference. Overshield coming up as well in around 10 seconds time. So there, you're gonna see the attention from both teams again. Locking down on that power-up. It's been all optics so far on those power-up grabs. The difference here is not only the power-up is up, but the skewer too. Formal dips his head down in-game and out of it to try and get away. Strong side in around that corner. But finally C9 get a power-up. Can they make it work? No. Last of time on the clock. That's one kill. Can they continue to connect the dots? Oh my goodness gracious, that overshield is shredded. And Eco with no more to play in terms of the advantage, but now six kill game. But not before the damage was done, right? A little bit like Trippy a little bit earlier. Eco walks in, gets damage down, takes attention away from the other players on C9. Meaning they can push in and convert them into kills. This game is not over yet. It's six between C9 and Optic. And again, C9 fighting their way back into this game. United team of veterans, they know what they need to do here. Five minutes left on the clock, lots of time to still construct a comeback here. Let's and they will make this very, very difficult for Optic Gaming on the cusp of a tournament Optic. win. Let's go Optic! Let's go Optic! Let's Stay on me on the map. Penguin with the skewer in his hands, we saw some of the shots he was hitting with this in the previous series against FaZe. Bound's gonna open things up here with a kill onto Trippy. It's now a five kill game. One pick here from Penguin. And C9 put the pressure back onto Optic. It looks like all of Optic are rotating away though. You can see the Penguin's just slowly having to step forward, check every single corner, because the last thing you want to be doing is giving away a free kill to a back smack, giving away that skewer and giving Optic the tools back in their hands. And what a time here, a little bit of deja vu for Cloud9. We've seen them before in a situation like this on this map. They've brought the game within five. Let's go to an Astro listening with Cloud9. Top and bottom. Okay, okay. We gotta be fast though. We gotta be... We what do we wanna do? What do we wanna do here? I'm gonna play to grapple this. How are we gonna grapple this? We, yeah, we need to push their push here. We need to push the right. Just sit there, opposite side, opposite side. Yeah, we should go to the You guys love sword. They're on spikes, so you Obi. I'll collect Obi now. Yeah, watch out, watch out, watch out, Spikes. Be there, watch out, Trippy, watch out, Trippy. You got Spikes. Look at that. Main ramp. On both sides, Spikes. Go for it now, go for it now, I think. Yeah, just grab for the Spikes, grab for the Spikes, grab for the Spikes. Yo, Trippy's there, weak. Ovi's got me, I'm guys. Full shield's loosened, full shield's loosened. Over here, trap door, over here, trap door. I don't know. Yeah, Ovi's in. Sorry, I'm down. Another one more shot, another one more shot. That's one, that's one, two, that's one, two. I'm up above you guys. Nice, nice, I'm coming, I'm coming. They might run, they might run. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, two shots. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Nice lift. Oh, I'm on my board now. I was scared. He's below me. Below me. Yeah, two, 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 two. Okay, down there. Go there. Look, look, look. Yeah, I got him. Oh. Get the skewer. Get the skewer. Oh, go, 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 go there. Go there. Go, go, go. They go, might go. have it. They might have it. Go, go. Bottom sword, dude. Oh, oh, it. Spider, 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 spider. Someone get that. Someone get that. Someone get that. Someone get that. Hiding bottom sword. I'll get it. I'll get it. Formal could be on our side somewhere. I think Formal's our side sword. I don't know. One could. Yeah. One could be hiding. Let's just keep walking forward. Just keep walking forwards. Yeah. 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 I'm about to walk at this, guys. Yeah. I have a repulse. Here, Top skewer. We should anybody see if they go for skewer. They might go for it. Yeah, watch on the on the skewer, on the skewer, literally on it. He's got it. Look in the flag. Yeah, there's like there's two. Yeah, there's two on the skewer. Yeah. Got on. on me, on me. Should be him. Look at him. Should be his weak. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're in. Yeah, two, two, two there, two there. What's up, boy? Top, top of skewer. On top of skewer. They're running. They're running. Just there, just there, just there, just there, just there. Yeah, skewer. The they're in the other flag. Yo, someone hit sword with me. Back into the game. Astro listening certainly told us the full focus here from Cloud9, as you would expect in a situation like this. But Optic have managed to eat out a six kill, make it seven kill advantage. It's 13 more to go. So call yourself a champ. I mean, great patience, great rotations yeah. from Optic Gaming and great kills as well from Formal to just keep inching the lead further and further. That leads to an overshield grab for Trippy as well. Now they're up by 10. 10 to go. Count them down, Optic fans. As Trippy has that overshield, there's one of them. Eco down to no shields. Formal sending himself in as well. Stella, Eco.
Eco. Eco down first. Eight to go. Seven to go now for Optic Gaming. This is what they were waiting for. The perfect timing on the push. It was just a four kill game. Now it's a 14 kill game. It's the Trippy takeover at the moment. He's got this commando and the man isn't missing. 12 and 10 on his way. Maybe, just maybe to a first ever LAN Championship. Eco gets taken down by Stella. It's three to go now. Oh my God, look at this. Lucy picks up another one as well. Formal's 14 and four as they cross the 48 kill mark. Send in Formal. 49. Formal might be the man to do it for Optic. Formal and Trippy. Champions of the Halo Championship Series Orlando Major are on Team Gaming. How long have they waited for this moment? You get to see an embrace there from Trippy and Lucid, and it's been 10 long months waiting for the land win, and they have achieved it here. We wondered if Slow and Steady would win the race for Optic Gaming, and they've done it here in Orlando, only three weeks away from the Halo World Championship. A first event win, not only for this squad, but for Trippy and Lucid, a moment they won't forget. Optic Gaming, you are the champions. Months and months and months of work from this squad, working on every little detail to perfect their gameplay, and they've done it here, and what a time to do it. Smiles across the stage as Optic Gaming will win their first LAN event of Halo Infinite. And in front of an incredible, incredible crowd as well. The confetti is raining down. And for APG Informal, they've been there before, but for Trippy and Lucid, this is a new feeling for them. Having that trophy in their hands and calling themselves a champion. You can't take that away from me. I anyone. mean, look at that moment. Trippy just taking the time to hold that trophy and read it there. It's real. It is real. And this team has fought through so much all season long. Team changes, doubts, tough game five losses. But they are now your HCS Orlando major champions with a 4-1 grand final win. What a performance. And like you say, sets them up so, so well for the big one. Three weeks time, the Halo World Championships will arrive. But for now, it's time to hear from our winners here in Orlando. A huge congratulations from Bravo and myself to Optic Gaming. Blaze, take it away. Thank you so much, Onset and Brav. Orlando, once again, give it up to your champions, Optic Gaming! Wow! Let's start down the line here. I'm gonna go to Coach. Coach, you had a fantastic day. We watched you play in the show match. We watched you come out here and get a victory for this team. What does it mean to get one for Optic Gaming? I mean, this was the goal all along. This is why I came back to, to coach. So uh, it was a matter of time before Tommy and Joey got there first, and it's about damn time. Yeah! Let's talk to Tommy and Joey. Lucy, you are a champion, and you do it with Optic Gaming. You have played fantastic this whole season. How are you feeling? I feel absolutely great right now, man. It's just the culmination of all the hard work we've been putting in and <clears throat> coming down to this and the, the absolute discipline we were showing at yeah. every single moment. It was a whole nother level that I'm, I'm gonna, or we're all gonna make sure that this is the consistency from here on out. Ooh, we talked That's about cool. consistency throughout our interviews and it definitely showed. Let's move on to Trippy and Body it. How does it feel? A trophy in your hand and you are a Halo champion. It, it feels amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming. Tommy and I have been second, third, third. We've been at all, we've been at pretty much through it for this whole time. Like, yeah. What, five years? So to, so to finally hold a trophy, it's, it feels amazing. It's the best feeling in the world.
championship to this organization for a, for a different game, but how does it feel to be a Halo champion again under the Optic banner? Come on, man. Yeah! Let's go! Let's you did that! It feels great. Feels great. I love Orlando. I, I love Orlando for real. I love playing here. The crowd's always amazing. And I'm just so happy for these two right here, man, for real. It was only a matter of time. Now, as you pass the mic over to the King Orlando, one of the kings of Halo, APG, your champion again. Talk to the fans. Bro, I don't I don't even have any words. Uh, I mean we have just don't don't be mean. We, uh, we have about like 24, 48 hours to be happy about it and be uh, celebrating, but then we got Worlds to focus on, so this is just uh, the first step. But we, uh, we, we did what we were supposed to do. We came here, we did what we practiced, and I couldn't even be happier. I couldn't be more thankful for my team. Uh, I love my team. Thank you to the Green Wall, uh -huh. everybody out here. Thank you guys so much for the support. Our family and friends, our girlfriends, my girlfriend, Everybody, thank you guys so much. But just remember, we still got uh, we still got one last step. So but. yeah, one last step. Pass the mic back over. Lastly, to Matt and Matt, any last words you want to give to this crowd and the fans out there? Green Wall, come on, man! You guys are amazing, amazing as always, as always. And uh, we're looking forward to Worlds. We're gonna try and try to bring that one home for you guys. Thank you guys so much, for real. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. One more time. just so damn good and i've got to say they dropped one map leading up to this moment so their perfect record is only fair that they only drop one in the grand final that perfection is really hard to come by clutch what an insane performance we just saw from the green wall and i had this funny feeling at the beginning of this tournament coming into it that they were going to do it here and now i think a lot of people did talk to me about the journey that they had the progression the discipline that lucid spoke of on that main stage that made this moment possible i mean this is by far the best team we have here this weekend absolute excellence in every sense of the word all four of them lights out the coach lunchbox i mean you can't say enough about each individual story to get here. What a monumental moment it is for this team to get this win leading into Worlds with everything that they've been through throughout their careers. Emotional to say the least. I mean, you can almost see Trippy brought to tears with how much the moment means. And it, it brings me back to like, I mean, Faisal, you know how it feels when you get that win, what that relief of the hard work that you put in and for Trippy to find that moment. And honestly, Lucid, the entire team has different stories, but Wow, what a load off their chest. What an absolute monster performance these guys have. And I cannot wait to celebrate with them. Goofy, they embody champions up there. They played like they already had it in their hands when they got up on that stage against Cloud9. Cloud9 obviously pushing back just a little bit. But again, that bounce back factor that we have been missing all season long from Optic is finally here. Is it here to stay? It looks like it's here to stay. Optic Gaming's first grand finals in an ACS major, and they take home the victory. Obviously, shout out to that whole team, formal APG, Lucid, Trippy, and Coach Lunchbox with alumni there standing behind them as well, Mr. Lovejoy. And what a moment and what an opportunity for this green wall. What a great moment altogether. APG, Trippy, these guys deserve this win. Lucid and Trippy specifically, shout out to them, their first championship, and I expect them to roll into the world's feeling good and ride the momentum. Dan, this is your moment. This is your moment. Your I mean, team, I've they been, came through. I've been getting ripped all season long for saying Optic should be winning this or Optic deserve to be winning that. Optic, the best team. Finally, they do get it done. Finally, it is proven that all the practice they put into this event has come into play and they looked unstoppable. There was a brief moment during pool play where we, I think all Optic fans were like, Okay, maybe it's not gonna be as easy, but boy, did they make it look pretty easy after that point. I think Clutch was completely right. The best team here without a shadow of a doubt. And now you truly believe going into a world championship, Optic are the favorites, and now everyone else is gonna be catching them up. Let's take a look at our favorites and the run that they went on to get to this moment, to this win here in this major. Our winners bracket for you, Optic, a near perfect finish heading into that grand final. And then quite honestly, that was perfect to me, a 4-1 victory in a grand final, going up against the Cloud9 who was heating up respectfully. That is just absolutely insane.
you're looking at a different caliber of team here for Optic, and the work they put in clutch has paid off. What do you expect next for this team? How are they going to perform at Worlds? I mean, you got to take it from APG's mouth, right? We got 48 hours to celebrate. Guess what? Back to work. Worlds is a couple weeks away, and these guys, yeah, this is a monumental moment. This is something they'll remember for the rest of their lives. So let me tell you, a world championship, nothing like it. I'll tell you what else I remember. That cash money getting sent straight to their bank accounts. The prize pool was absolutely insane. Of course, thank you so much to the crowdfunding from the Halo community because there was a lot of money on the line. $350,000 on the line. I believe 140,000 of that was in first place. And you've got to see the HCS points racking up as well. All really important heading into Worlds 2. But this prize pool is absolutely insane. So not only do they have the pride of the pack here, but also Goofy the money to show for it. Yeah, $140,000 going to Optic Gaming. And shout out again to Cloud9 Bounds' first grand finals appearance. I'm sure they're going to learn a lot from this event and take it into Halo World Championships with a chip on their shoulder. But for right now, it's all about Optic Gaming. Determined throughout the whole weekend talking to these guys when I got the chance to talk with them over the course of the weekend. And they felt confident. They knew what they had to do, and they executed like Lucy had said. This is what they expected to do, and it's about time that they executed. Yeah, indeed, they executed for sure. And honestly, they looked like executioners on that main stage all weekend long. And obviously, a lot of this is now leading up to the World Championships. You heard APG on that stage. Before he could even celebrate, World Championships were coming out of his mouth. That's what he's thinking about. He's like, yep, love this win. Waited so long for this moment, but I'll tell you what, that next step, that's really what they have their eyes on. He said, look, 24 hours of celebration, but it's back to work. It's back to business. And that's the championship mindset. That's the champion mindset coming forward there. So it's actually exciting, I think, to see, and as Optic fans, that this is their new focus. Yeah. They've, they've accomplished one thing, but it's on to the next. Uh, Halo World Championships, of course, folks, happening October 20th to 23rd. So make sure you guys are tuning in. If you want to see Optic showing up once again, you can do. That will be on your screens. And oh, my goodness me, Gaskin, what an exceptional, exceptional run from this, guys. I'm so excited to see them in Seattle, the home of Halo, Optic Gaming. How far can they go? If you thought this tournament was good, World Championships is going to be 10 times better. Optic Gaming looked fantastic, but think of all the teams that were under practice this event, had changes recently this event. They're going to come back bigger, stronger. They're going to challenge Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming, it will be tough, but you know full well they are going to be fighting their very hardest. I cannot wait. They certainly will indeed. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on the desk. An absolute pleasure to close out the show with you and an exceptional result, of course, for Optic Gaming. Well, folks, this is going to do it from us. What a weekend it has been. So many big moments to take away, but one of the biggest has to be your Orlando Major Champions, Optic Gaming. Next up is Worlds, and you could say it's where everything this season is settled. We will see you all in Seattle, where it's bigger and better than ever, and where we crown our world champions of the Halo Championship Series. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.